Hey everyone, welcome back to another Jazz Drummer Q-Tip of the Week. Before we jump into the lesson, I just want to give a quick shout out to some friends and incredible, incredible musicians, and I'm not exaggerating. Um, I'm going to put all of their links into the description below, so make sure you check their channel out, subscribe to their channel, and, make, and check out the content they're putting out, uh, because I think it's going to be really helpful for you. So a big shout out to Steve Pruitt, Stockton Helbing, uh, Matt Young, Joe Farnsworth, and uh, Dr. Sean Thunder Wallace. Uh, definitely check them out. All right, so look, this lesson, this groove is going to help you tremendously if you're trying to kind of um, explore how to combine some of the Latin sounds and feelings and textures uh, in more of a, a funky setting or more of a, um, a jazz, a straight ahead jazz context. This is it right here, this groove. The New York style Mozambique uh, bell pattern is tremendously versatile and I'm going to demonstrate how versatile it is. So first I'm going to demonstrate the bell pattern on the bell. <laughs> Okay, so through all of these different grooves, I'm going to pretty much stick to that pattern in the right hand. Left hand is going to change a little bit, and we'll discuss that a little further as we get there. So the first thing, um, the first application I'm going to show you is from Caravan, Art Blakey. This is one of his signature grooves, and it's so bad. It's so bad, and it just has so much spirit and energy. Uh, so definitely learn this. This is Art Blakey from Caravan. And just so you know, the bass drum is essentially just keeping uh, quarter notes or half notes, however you look at it. Um, I think of them as, as uh, actually half notes. One, two, three, four, one, two, one, three, one, three, okay? And the hi-hat is just playing off beats. Okay? Now he applies this groove also uh, to another song from a big band album of his called Art, Art Blakey Big Band. Um, and it's a little slower. The song is El Toro uh, Valiente. I believe that's the correct pronunciation of it. Uh, but it's a little slower, and you'll notice he actually swings it. It's the same, pretty much the same groove, but he swings it. That's why I love this groove, because it's, it's so versatile. So this is that groove. One, two, uh, one, uh, yeah, one, two. If you notice, compared to, it's more swung now. You hear it? So it's a really subtle change, but it makes a big difference in the feeling of the groove. All right, next, um, we're going to talk about uh, one of the, the baddest ever uh, to play this instrument, Steve Gadd. And uh, this is one of his, you know, famous grooves from Late in the Evening by Paul Simon. Uh, so the right hand, again, it doesn't change. It's what we're doing in the left hand that changes, right? In the left hand, we're going to be playing one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. That's it. Right hand stays the same. Bass drum, we're playing half notes. Um, Hi-hat, we can also play half notes. So here we go. One, two, ah. 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 all right, so I kind of changed it up a little bit, but that's the beauty of it. You don't have to stick to the exact 
uh, pat it's, you know, don't think of it as a pattern so much as more of a, uh, just a groove, right? And a flow. If you think of it like just a general flow, then that kind of opens up things for you and doesn't uh, make you feel like you have to play it a certain way every time, okay? Uh, so, and he also, you'll also hear him play in more of a pop setting. Um, there's a song by the great vocalist Michael McDonald, right? And uh, this is called Love Lies, I believe. Uh, Love Lies. Love Lies? Something like that. Something that's kind of unique about this is he puts the hi-hat on on uh, beat one of each measure. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's pretty hip. And then the bass drum is playing on beat three. So the feet are going one, two, three. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's probably better to think of it like that. One, two, a one, two, uh, uh, uh. So something you'll notice about that is the left hand really doesn't have a, a role, a real uh, clear role. And, um, but one, something you can do is just use your left hand to fill in what you're not playing in the right hand. So essentially I'm going, if I, if I play it on two uh, hard surfaces. All right, is that right? So I'm, I'm, I have, I wasn't really changing the hands at all. And yet you can create so many different textures uh, with different voicings. Okay. So, so that's something to work on with any kind of groove that you're learning. Okay. Now this is more of a funk uh, application of that same groove. So as you can hear, it can get really funky. Uh, and again, I'm just using the, the exact bell pattern, the Mozambique bell pattern in my right hand, pretty much. Um, but it's my left hand that's changing the whole vibe of the groove, right? Uh, and also, make sure you can move it around again, right? You want to be able to orchestrate it in different parts of the kit so that you're not stuck playing it in one location in one way, right? And this is going to help you uh, play form, right? Maybe for the A section, you play it like this. For the bridge, you play it like this, or you play it here. And it's going to bring life to your grooves. Okay, now the last drummer that we're going to discuss is uh, Elvin Jones and his application of this groove. His most well-known example of this groove is A Love Supreme by John Coltrane. I'm sure all of you who, who are viewing this know that song. But there's a lot of nuance to how he plays it, and it makes it a little more challenging, actually. This is the basic flow. There's a lot of variations to how he plays it, but this is the basic flow. One really important kind of um, element or nuance to how he plays it is his hi-hat. It's really hip. I'm just going to play my right hand and my hi-hat.
Okay? So opening and closing on beats. One, two, three. One, two, open. One, two, close. Open. Okay, so this is the basic groove. One, two, three. Catch it, right? So that's a little trickier because there's a lot of nuance. It involves touch. Um, it, it, with all of these grooves, you really have to pay attention to the balance with which you play um, in each limb to, to get the groove to feel and sound right, okay? And sound balanced. You can also hear Elvin play it on a faster tempo. A good example of this is McCoy Tyner's Passion Dance, right? So, um, dee -da -loo -loo -ya. so the bridge is like, I'm out of breath, but, uh, as you can see, it's a really fun groove. And I highly recommend everyone to uh, work on it and try to come up with different ways of playing it. Um, be very flexible um, and nimble with how you play it so that you're not stuck playing it in one way. These will get you in the door, but then you have to explore just kind of opening up with that groove, okay? All right, well, that is the lesson and uh, I hope that you learned something new today. Um, as usual, Make sure you like this video. It really lets me know that these videos are, are continuing to be helpful. Um, and subscribe if you're not already a sub subscriber. Thank you to everybody who's already subscribing. I am planning on coming out with another video this holiday break because I have some time. Um, so in the comments, let me know if there's a lesson, that, if there's a topic, a subject matter that you want me to cover in a lesson. And I will consider it. All right, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.